If I can't tuba, what's all this been about? What have I been working towards? Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to my review for Power Rangers Beast Morphers episode Tuba Triumph. I keep wanting to call it Trouble with the Tuba for some reason. That feels like it would have been an MMPR title. Also, my Team Rock t-shirt finally came in, so if you want to get your own, link's in the description. Time for some shilling. This episode was in a lot of ways a very standard filler, but it's kind of better than you think it would be, if that makes any sense. Like, it's got all the the hallmarks of a classic MMPR episode, actually, because there's some sort of item that's turned into a monster, which is this kid's tuba, and then there's, like, moral lessons about the, the wazoo, or the tuba. Oh, bullying with the, this kid with the tube and stuff like that, but I think that for me at least I think it has showed some improvements in some of the things that they go too hard in on with these types of episodes So the basic premise is there's a kid playing the tuba like could they have picked I mean I guess they needed it for the monster, but I feel like maybe they could have picked What's the one that is it the trumpet the burr, 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 the I don't know I don't know the horns such an obnoxiously large one to pick where this kid's playing the tuba and these bullies are like hey we're kid bullies, we're gonna pour soda in your whatever. And then so he, I couldn't even think of the word tuba and I just said it. Pour soda in it and then he's like, I'm gonna quit the tuba and he throws it out. And it's like, it's like the most hilarious thing to throw out. It's like gigantic, it's taking up the whole public trash can. Like, I would have even accepted a flute. Like it would have been kind of a stretch for the monster, but at least it would have been more easy to deal with. But he throws it out, Robbie sees him and there's this whole connection between them of like, you know, the bullies are making fun of me, I want to learn self-defense, you know, and they hook up and, no, 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 they don't hook up, you know, they just get, get ready to get together and they um, are going to meet at the Riptide Gym so he can teach him self-defense. And then Roxy, hashtag Team Roxy, she steals the tuba to create a tuba monster and they're continuing the plot of using the monsters to sort of credit card pass, steal the ranger's powers. Uh, later, Ravi's teaching the kid at the gym and he's like, you know, yay, now I can beat the bullies up. And he's like, you know, then he spews out the Power Rangers uh, company line of, you know, don't use karate for, you know, offense, only for defense. And I, I would have been like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to defend myself in advance, just get, get ahead of it. But that's, you know, the company line, he's like, golly gee, okay. And so they do that and it's actually not as bad as you would think. There's one part in this episode later, which is absolutely I just like as bad as you would think. But in terms of the bullying stuff, it actually wasn't so bad. I mean, there's some martial arts training and, you know, discussions about don't use karate for just bullying yourself, basically only use it in defense and basically Jedi stuff. Um, but there's like a nice conversation between them. It's kind of ends up being less of a, uh, in a way, less of a bullying episode specifically about the bullying and more a be yourself episode. Uh, talking about like him wanting to do the tuba and Ravi encouraging him to do what he likes to do and be who he is no matter what. And all I could think about was that line from Brooklyn Nine-Nine where he goes, be myself. What kind of garbage advice is that? So we have that kind of setup going on there. And then there's the ranger fight with the tuba. And there's this weird thing about the, the sound wave resonating for the battle. And the kid ends up helping by blasting his tuba. And I'm like, oh my god, Lin. That part was stupid. I mean, everything else I was actually kind of impressed with because the kid actually wasn't that bad of an actor. The, the lesson didn't actually feel too cheesy. It actually felt like some decent-ish advice. Like, I've talked about this a lot, but a lot of the times, especially in the bullying episodes, like, the advice will just not work in the real world. Like, it's gonna get you bullied worse. So I was, like, actually happy. I'm like, wow, this is actually kind of balanced. The dialogue's not too cheesy. It's more kind of a be-yourself message. While still cheesy, it's a little bit more realistic. And then they have the kid fight the monster with the tuba and how did he get the tuba back? Well, Robbie got it from his grandfather, which was kind of a sweet touch, but that part was stupid. I didn't like that part and then they used it later, the idea later with the Megazord 2 of the resonating sound waves to defeat it, but it was like, not like this is the greatest episode ever that was suddenly dismantled by this, but like I said, I was kind of impressed by it not being as bad as I thought just based on the premise and then that part yeah, I didn't like that part. That was dumb for me. And there was some also like dumb Ben and Betty stuff with the tuba, like just what you'd think, like, oh, let's pour soap bubbles into the tuba, that type of logic and, and stuff like that. And the episode kind of ends with the bully kid actually picking on Ben and Betty and the kid kid, tuba kid, I'll name him tuba lad, I forgot kid's name, tuba lad scares them off by doing like a roundhouse kick or something and knocks the kid's hat off. 
And that actually kind of reminded me of when Bulk and Skull were bothering Kimberly and Jason just did a karate form in front of them. So one thing, I thought it was nice that it was actually something like that, because I probably wouldn't want to show the kid decking him or something like that. Get set to get decked! I think that was Zexel. But I prefer that resolution to like, guys, you really need to think about your behavior, and they're like, God, we really do. Let's go get ice cream together. Like, that's not what would happen. Like, it wasn't the most realistic resolution, but it was a little bit more realistic. Still, if someone started doing a karate, f he actually hit his hat off, but I was thinking of Tommy. If someone actually started, I mean, sure, they'd probably kick my ass, but if they started not fighting me, but just doing a karate form in front of me, I would crack up. Like, that's hilarious. I liked that, but it was a little bit more realistic. And I liked the note the episode ended on, because tied in with this whole storyline with Tuba Lad was Ravi was drawing in the park, and he is an artist, and he has to keep that secret because he's, his mom doesn't like rangers having anything to do that, specifically him, I guess. He never really gets on Devin's case for mentioning video games, well, like, no one. No one at all. Devin. Video games. I got anyone else's case about that, but I guess in addition to not wanting him having a relationship, she doesn't support his artistic endeavors. He knows this because he said, I do not support these artistic endeavors. And so that's kind of tied in with the plot. Uh, that's why he identifies with the kid and there's like a nice note at the end where uh, The kid gives him a framed picture of one of his drawings of him and Roxy because he saw his sketches earlier now I really liked that so two things because this is like I said hallmarks of all of the filler episode But there's two things I really liked about this episode one the bully stuff showed improvements not perfect But it wasn't overly cheesy and it was edging more towards some realistic advice Two, I like that they tied the filler plot into a character storyline. This is something I always talk about, how if you, okay, it's clear the Power Rangers and Sentai are holding on to filler with dear life, but if we're gonna do it, make me feel like I'm at least somewhat getting something out of it for the main show. Don't make me feel like this episode is nothing. And whether it's small, smally, smally, in a small way, advancing the main plot, or maybe something with the character, and that's what they did here, is they tied it into Robbie's character. I learned a little bit more about Robbie's character. It tied into something we already knew about him. It kind of expanded on it. Like, it was more than about just Roxy, but yet again, it came back to Roxy. It wasn't huge groundbreaking stuff, but I appreciated it. I felt I got to know Robbie a little bit more, and it expanded on an existing character trait for him, and it made the filler episode feel like it was actually giving us something worthwhile, rather than, if this was Sentai, especially in the 90s, this would have been completely about the tuba kid and Ravi would have just literally been there to follow the kid around to make sure the audience knows the story of this kid we'll never see again. But I thought this was a pretty decent episode. I'd give it a seven. Nothing overly groundbreaking, but I did just want to draw attention to some of the improvements and that's something I was sort of talking about when I did my series review is that it's not blowing us away yet, but I'm seeing incremental improvements like this in some of the things that were uh, all these little nitpicks I would have during the Neo Saban era. So I think it's an improvement in that regard. So what do you guys think? Did you enjoy the tube episode even though it was a little bit cheesy? Do you think there's improvements or do you think it's just as bad and I'm nuts. I mean, I am nuts, but like not about this. I mean, I'm not giving, whatever, you know what I mean. I'm gonna leave now. Until next time, don't forget like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps, and ring that bell so you can get notifications for all my videos, and check out the shirt store in the comments. Till next time, Dawson Ryder, signing out.